Good morning, folks. We've got some great articles and review today. We're also going to have to keep a close eye on the sun as it's already released two more M-Class solar flares this morning. Tried to release a CME as well. More STO calibration rolls confounding the view, but the fun stuff actually waited for those to be over. In geospace, everything is very quiet, but that's not so much the case up on the sun. We're on the right side. You can see those M flares from this morning. Both came out of the southern sunspot group, the large one. During the beginning of that sequence, a tiny CME tried to release as the bulk of ionized plasma. If it had released, it would have gone south, but most collapsed back. Eyes on our star as those spots begin to cross through. Let's start the articles, and NASA's been pumping their big press release and media event today on Jupiter. And while I hate to blow up their spot, if you put your paper on archive the night before the event, I'm going to see it. Deep microwave data from Juno is revealing the atmospheric layering, interestingly happening at the vapor line. Paper linked below if you want to check it out. Up next, astronomers have discovered another early proto-cluster. These distant galaxies are seen as they were long ago, coming together and huddling up to brave the cold vastness of the infant cosmos. We still know virtually nothing about those early galactic neighborhoods. But now a quick look at a fun article out of NASA asking if we need a new way to view extraterrestrial life, trying to create a definitive rubric and set of marks for claiming that we're not alone. Good read on that one. But up next, the DOE and Lawrence Livermore are shilling for climate grants. Using the unrealistic emissions models and the uncorrected CO2 bias models, they sound like Al Gore's warning from over 20 years ago, don't they? No more snow? Yeah, well, unfortunately, these shill factories aren't paying attention to the field or including the oceans, or using the most updated modeling, which you may recall from a few days ago, isn't exactly going to mean the end of snow. It's going to get much, much worse. And speaking of that kind of an oops, Montreal Protocol still in play, still can't get the ozone hole back to where it was, and it won't get there while Earth's magnetic field is in excursion and allowing more solar protons and space particles to come in and change that atmospheric chemistry. Now, the top story today requires us to go back and remember the major development this season in galactic current sheet science. Despite their seeing it in polarization, gamma returns, and various mappings of dust and gas, despite their knowing that the waves are like the Parker spiral in the solar system, they range tens of light years apart, and they wave 70 to 160 parsecs up and down in the midplane. The models and theory and math have just never been able to fully make it work throughout the galaxy. They can't match the observations. And that's what this hugely anticipated talk in November is going to be all about. They have a pretty good bit of evidence for the total magnetic system encompassing the galaxy, not just here, but at other galaxies as well. But despite all that visual evidence, they're missing something along the way, something to fight back against the mid-plane gravity and keep the waveform going all the way out to the edge. Here, they say that a few supernova could easily provide that juice to the current sheet along the way. But do you know what that means? If a few supernova can do it, that means that if the current sheet is triggering super flares and dwarf nova and micronova along the way as it hits the stars, it's got the same, if not more, energy to maintain itself peppered along the way than it would from a tiny number of bigger events. Folks, did you catch that? The way the models and theory and math finally match up to the observations is the solar micronova and similar triggerings of stars as the current sheet hits them. After all of this, that's what it took. You need this to actually have good galactic science. Now with that review, let's go to the next identification of one of those waves. Astronomers are still wrestling with different names. They call them mid-spiral shocks, feathers, spurs, but regardless of the names, they're all describing the sine wave rippling through the galaxy. Sometimes it's the shock front that is densest, sometimes it's the interstellar galactic magnetic filaments that are densest. By the way, the sun's connecting filament is that tunnel of magnetism we're inside that made big news the last couple of weeks. I frankly don't care if they never agree on a name, as long as they keep identifying them in ways that observers can recognize. Frankly, with this level of honesty, humility, and the we simply don't knows admitted by the scientists, I'll call them happy Susans if they want me to, just as long as you know what it means for our star. We greatly appreciate your support, our channel playlists, books, and our website, all great places to learn more about the solar micronova and the cyclical disaster of Earth. 
We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.